Thank you everyone for joining us. I felt really, uh, I felt like giving this webinar was very important, a deep dive into reverse engineering, specifically with Creaform products and VX model. Uh, just because we work with a lot of customers that ask about reverse engineering and how we approach it. So again, welcome, thank you for joining. My name is Jonathan Rodriguez. I'm a digital manufacturing application engineer out of the Northeast region, specifically our Ambler, Pennsylvania office. And then here's my email as well if you have any questions about these products or want to learn more. So quick agenda. Who are we? Who is Creaform? I've already mentioned them already. What is reverse engineering and why is it important to us? So Go Engineer delivers software technology and expertise that enables companies to unlock design innovation and deliver better products faster. We have 35 years experience and tens of thousands of customers across various different industries. And specifically the solutions we're gonna talk about today are Creaform, as I mentioned, and some SolidWorks. We have other scanning equipment from our tech and different softwares as well on the scanning side, but those are the two that I'm gonna focus on today. We have over 60 offices nationwide and 220 technical experts on staff. So if you have questions about these things and you reach out, there's always gonna be somebody to offer some solutions and help out. So certainly our main goal is to be a resource for you. Who is Creaform? So we sell their products. Creaform develops and manufactures cutting edge portable 3D measurement tools, including their award-winning metrology grade 3D scanner, the HandyScan Black Elite, as you can see on the left. Their systems are easy to use and set up and perfectly suited for many of the reverse engineering projects we find our customers in, and especially for myself and some of our other staff that are on the 3D scanning services team. So getting into reverse engineering, Creaform describes it as the process that involves measuring a physical object and reconstructing it as a 3D model to re recover design intent. I really like this definition because it focuses on creating that 3D model, recovering that design intent and reconstructing that physical object. So we're talking mostly about parts that were antiquated. Uh, there might be no drawing or no CAD related to it. Replacement parts that are no longer supported. So we work with a lot of customers that have equipment that's really old that needs to keep running uh, and oftentimes they can't find replacement parts. Creating digital libraries to store art, sculptures, etc. cetera. Uh, making design changes and optimizations to parts. So 3D scanning a part uh, that might be an OEM part, making design changes to make it better suited for the application. And then one that I specifically like for the automotive sector is clearance checks. So being able to scan a space, bring it into SolidWorks, bring your part into SolidWorks along with it, and checking for clearances, making design adjustments just to make sure everything should be fitting properly. VX model is Creaform's scan to CAD software module and it has some really incredible tools. Being able to clean, repair, smooth mesh surfaces, also some auto surfacing tools that we're gonna talk about as well. And then being able to create reference geometry to pull into SolidWorks cross sections, planes, entities, etc. So the question I always ask myself when going into reverse engineering is what is our end goal? And I feel like if you can answer this question, then how we go about doing it really becomes clear. One of them being 3D printing parts. Another common one is capturing complex surfaces like this dashboard. Creating geometric step files to be able to edit a design and then fully redesigning a part in SolidWorks. So going through them one by one, the easiest and quickest one is the 3D printing side. And especially at Go Engineer, we love this one because we do a lot of 3D printing as well. So being able to scan a part like this gear on the left, take it into SolidWorks as a STL and then pull it into a slicer, set up a print profile and start recreating this part. SolidWorks, if you're familiar though, does not like STL files. This is actually, uh, a quick image of how it looks when you zoom in. It's kind of sporadic, it's all over the place. You can't really edit it. 
So the benefits to her are it's easy to create and export, and it's very accurate to your scan data. But some of the limitations are editing it, and especially how it interacts with SolidWorks. Uh, as you can see on the left, you can't really extrude it. It comes in as a graphics body. It's not great, but you can pull it to a 3D printer really easy and remake this model. Going into VX model, the software that I had mentioned from Creaform, we can clean meshes, we can fill holes, we can edit boundaries if you are missing some data, it's not smooth, and then you can create water type meshes, which is perfect for 3D printing applications. Complex surfaces. This is one we get a lot of questions about. If you think back to the dashboard application that I showed earlier, uh, here is this funnel part that has this giant dent in the middle. And if you want to maintain that auto surfaces, scanning this and creating a complex surface might be a good way to maintain that. So some of the benefits are within VX model specifically, there's some powerful surfacing tools to get accurate to your scan data surfaces. So generally they're accurate, especially if you are uh, kind of creating this NURB surface or surface patches, you can import them as solid bodies, which makes them interactable within SolidWorks, which is huge. So you can actually see I've created this extruded cut just through it, just to show that you can interact with that. I can grab vertices, I could grab edges, et cetera. Uh, some of the limitations are though, depending on how you do this, you can capture those defects. So that might be a benefit, it might be a limitation. And within SolidWorks, you can't really edit it directly and easily. But if I go to this next one, you can actually see a comparison between that surface file and our original scan data. And at a 5,000th of an inch uh, tolerance, it's a 99% match. There's a few sections that are a little out of tolerance, but for the most part, everything is exactly as my scan data. So if you're trying to grab something accurate, this might be a quick and easy way to do it. Within VX model, we can actually use these selection tools. They have fabulous selection tools, as well as some surfacing tools. So we have auto surfaces, we can manually create surface patches, or we can just create an individual patch and start stitching things together. So you have a lot of flexibility. The next one is a geometric model or step file. So you can see the scan data on the left. With VX model, there's some export to SOLIDWORKS tools. So I can grab some entities. In this case, I grabbed the center cylinder and these two uh, what look like perpendicular cylinders from it. I exported them out to SOLIDWORKS and you can see kind of what it looks like. So some of the benefits of this are I have a bit more control over the accuracy and idealization. The actual scanned part, even though these look perpendicular, is not at all. Uh, so I can make those decisions as I'm going about reverse engineering on whether I want to incorporate that perpendicularity or if I want to keep those angles as is. With it being a step file, a geometric step file, I can import it into a SOLIDWORKS. So that means I can interact with it exactly how you would any other solid body. I have better control over the accuracy because again, I can decide how I idealize this, but some of the limitations are geometric parts tend to be difficult to bring in complex surfaces to. So oftentimes what we do on our end is we will combine that surfacing tool with some of these geometric uh, applications. Other limitations, time, it's gonna take longer than that auto surfacing tool and it can, require some strong CAD experience, especially if you are doing that idealization and trying to recreate this part. So I very quickly just grabbed two of those cylinders and those perpendicular cylinders. And right off the bat, you can see without much uh, complication, I was able to match it to about 57%. So it's not exactly matching my scan data, but it is idealized to a certain extent. So I have to make the decision on whether I want to incorporate some of those deviations, dents, uh, some of that crookedness of it, or if I want to remove that out and get something that's more closely matching how I would actually design this and, and what you would intend to create from a manufacturer side. Within VX model, there's entity creation. So uh, grabbing 
cylindrical features, grabbing cones, spheres, cross sections, etc. And like I said, I grabbed uh, basically four cylinders or three cylinders, exported that to, straight to SolidWorks, and you can see how that looks over here. Within VX model, there's a very easy transfer to SolidWorks button, which makes it very easy to go back and forth between your scan data and your SolidWorks file. Taking it a step further, I can try to recreate a native CAD file or SOLIDWORKS file in this case. And so how that looks is the same entity creation that I was doing before, but instead using it as references. So here's a cross section that I took right from my scan data, took it to SOLIDWORKS, and by doing that, I can apply it to a flat plane, create that perpendicularity, and extrude it out. And now I have a fully parametric native CAD file with my feature tree. And this gives me a lot of flexibility to make design changes in the future. I can go right into the sketch and make adjustments. Some of the limitations with this are the same thing as a geometric step file. Complex surfaces, a little bit difficult to deal with, but SOLIDWORKS has some great surfacing features, especially if you're comfortable with it. Time, this is going to be the most time consuming thing, especially on the complexity of the part. And then of course, strong CAD experience. So what does this actually mean for operators, for companies looking to buy 3D scanner, reverse engineer, or call us on the services team to reverse engineer part for them? So here's actually one of uh, our customer success stories from a few years back. Kona Zeg, if you don't know who they are, are an automotive uh, company, they, build basically hypercars. I mean, each of these cars are, are absolutely insane. And one of the things that they do is they handcraft over 300 parts out of clay and carbon fiber prior to creating CAD models, getting that look and feel initially before going into something like SOLIDWORKS. And specifically with this process of being able to 3D scan something handmade, reverse engineer it, they mentioned a time savings of over 75% in many of their projects. So with 300 parts, being able to do this, you can see those time savings start to add up. Another application that I had mentioned was specifically recreating things that either no longer exist or don't have any CAD data. This specifically was another project, the Michigan Central Station. It was a Ford project. Uh, as you can see here, there is kind of this, um, wall feature that's very beautiful, it's organic, it's ornate, but the buildings from the early 1900s, I mean, whoever worked on this might no longer be around, there might not be much information on it, uh, finding paperwork and documentation may be limited. So being able to 3D scan it, not only keep that in perpetuity and pull it into a repository to save, but also reverse engineer and then take this into your construction project, being able to bring some of those ornate features back into your design. And this was a very cool project. I specifically didn't get to work on it, um, but right here is actually Bob. He is my supervisor. And so he got to actually do that project and it was fun speaking to him with, about it. So that's all I had as far as presentation. Again, I thought this one was really, really important because a lot of people don't know what file outputs you can get, what the time savings look like, how you can actually benefit from this. And it's always important to us to help you maximize your investment. And so this was something that hopefully you can take something away from it. This will also be up on YouTube later. So if you have any colleagues, operators, engineers that are looking to learn more, they can either check it out or visit us at goengineer.com or our YouTube page. Okay, great question. So the question was, how much do the scanners cost? Uh, if I go back really quickly, within Creaform product lines, uh, we have scanners ranging from the $10,000 range all the way up to uh, specifically the HandyScan Black Elite was about 60,000 range. In addition to Creaform products, we also sell Artec scanners. So many different options, but the best bet is to please reach out to us We'll have a local sales rep from your area, be able to talk to you, get you all that information, spec sheets, et cetera. Are any of these add-ins for SOLIDWORKS? So VX model, so VX scan and VX model are products specifically for Creaform scanners. And the 
the transfer to SOLIDWORKS button is built in. That is native from CreaForm. And so there's no add-in for SOLIDWORKS. This just trans, uh, exports it directly to SOLIDWORKS. It'll open up a session if you don't have one already. And if you do have one already, then it'll pull it in and populate that session in SOLIDWORKS. So no add-ins required. Other question was, if you're not looking to invest in a scanner, yes, we do scanning services. So I am on the scanning service team as well. And typically what ends up happening is a company like yourself, who's not looking to necessarily invest in a scanner, or maybe it's a one-off project, says, this is what we need to accomplish. How can we do this? And then we hop on a technical call with you, see what the actual application is, what exactly you're looking for. And then we can give you an estimate on what it would cost to do that. Uh, it could be either coming on site to scan a part and reverse engineer, or you can ship the part to one of our application engineers. Okay, so the question was when you said the STL style uh, file matched 57%, the STL uh, is going to be basically 100% accurate because it's, it's the scan data. Um, unless we have to fill holes and do any repairs to make it watertight, but it'll be exactly the same. The auto surface was 99% of a match to the scan data, and that was keeping the dents and the deviations, etc. cetera. Uh, and that's within a 5,000th of an inch tolerance. The geometric step file, again, depending on how you go about reverse engineering it, is less accurate generally to that scan data. Uh, just because I didn't want those deviations, I didn't want it warped, et cetera, I made it perpendicular. So it's gonna be less accurate. And here in these red spots, you can see um, that's a creeping towards that 10 thou accuracy instead of five. So it's a bit out of tolerance. It's still very accurate to the scan data, but it's not incorporating all those deviations as much. It's a surface best fit. So great question. Um, and then the scanner that was used to scan this point to surface accuracy is nine ten thousandth of an inch. So we take that point to surface accuracy, all those points get stitched together. And then as we reverse engineer, we typically try to hold a five or 10 thou uh, accuracy number. And all of these, all of these accuracy, uh, accuracy comparisons that I did were specifically the scan data to whatever reverse engineered product it was. So the STL isn't necessarily, it's like a loose uh, reverse engineering because this really is just cleaned up scan data. Um, so I just cleaned the mesh to remove any floating artifacts, things like that, fill any holes if there were, but this was a pretty clean mesh. And then if you're going for a 3D printing application, it has to be watertight, which means it has to have an enclosed volume. So there's a watertight button actually built into VX model that will seal off the surfaces and you can just pull it into any typical um, 3D printing slicer. Generally speaking, STLs are the most accurate to the scan data just because there's not much processing going on. So reverse engineering softwares, uh, I couldn't give you a number off the top of my head, but I can tell you we sell three different ones. VX model, which is specifically through CreaForm. Um, that's the one that I showed and demoed in this presentation. We also sell Design X from Geomagix. And then there's some Polyworks products. So those are the three I've ever interacted with. I don't touch Polyworks too often, but Design X and VX model are typically what I use. Uh, so specifically at Go Engineer, we have uh, three basically. And I do want to also add that uh, Geomagix is scanner agnostic. Uh, so it's not specifically for Creoform products. So if you already have a scanner or some other uh, product in-house, then Geomagix might be something that could benefit you. And, and we can certainly discuss that offline. You can reach out um, and we can, we can get somebody to discuss that with you. But for Creaform products, these scanners, specifically uh, VX scan for scan acquisition and VX model for the reverse engineering part of it. Thank you again, everyone, for your time. Have a great day, everyone.